The silver coffee pot trembled slightly in my hand as I refilled my cup, trying to ignore Dad's latest lecture about real medicine versus research. Sunday brunch at the Wilson family mansion had become a weekly trial since I'd left my prestigious surgical residency to pursue medical research three years ago. Emily, Dad's voice carried the weight of his forty years as chief of surgery, you're wasting your talent in some basement lab. The hospital board position is still open. Your sister Rachel took the administrative track and look at her success. I glanced at Rachel, perfectly poised in her designer suit, engagement ring from the hospital CO's son catching the morning light. At 32 she was everything our surgeon father had wanted, climbing the hospital's corporate ladder, making the right connections following his path. My research is showing promising results, I said quietly, checking my tablet discreetly under the table. The FDA review board's decision was due any minute. Promising. Dad scoffed, cutting into his eggs benedict. You're working on theoretical treatments while real patients need real doctors. I didn't pay for Harvard Medical School for you to play scientist. Mom touched his arm gently. James dear perhaps dash. No Catherine. He cut her off. Emily needs to hear this. That patent application you're so excited about? It's worthless. Your cancer treatment theory goes against every established protocol. Rachel smirked, sipping her mimosa. Not everyone can handle the pressure of real medicine, Daddy. Some people need safer options. My tablet vibrated. The message I'd been waiting three years for appeared. Patent approval confirmed. Revolutionary cancer treatment methodology validated. Starting bid from major pharmaceuticals. $2.8 billion. I took another sip of coffee, letting the moment sink in. The thing about established protocols, I said carefully, is that they can change. Especially when someone proves them wrong. Theory without practice is useless, Dad declared. Rachel, tell your sister about the new oncology wing you're overseeing. Before Rachel could launch into her rehearsed speech my phone rang. The caller ID made my heart skip. FDA Commissioner's Office. I put it on speaker. Let them all hear this. Dr. Wilson? This is Commissioner Roberts. I'm calling to personally congratulate you on the approval of your revolutionary cancer treatment patent. The board was unanimous. This is the biggest breakthrough in targeted therapy we've seen in decades. Dad's fork clattered against his plate. Rachel's mimosa glass froze halfway to her lips. Thank you, Commissioner, I replied calmly. I assume you've seen the initial bids? Yes, $2.8 billion from Martinez Pharmaceuticals, though we expect that to go much higher once word gets out. Every major medical company in the world will want this technology. Your treatment method could reduce cancer mortality rates by 60%. Mom's hand flew to her mouth. Dad's face had gone pale. The clinical trials can begin immediately, the commissioner continued. We fast-tracked everything. This is too important to delay. I appreciate that. I said watching my family's expressions shift from condescension to shock. My research team is ready to proceed. Your research team? Rachel sputtered. Yes, Dr. Wilson has assembled one of the finest medical research teams in the country, Commissioner Roberts explained. The basement lab you've been working in, doctor, it's quite impressive. State-of-the-art everything from what our inspectors reported. I smiled, remembering how they'd all laughed when I'd used my trust fund to buy that worthless lab space instead of a summer house in the Hamptons. Speaking of the lab, I checked my watch. I should get back to work. We'll need to prep for the clinical trials. Of course, of course, the commissioner agreed. The whole medical community will be watching this, Dr. Wilson. You've changed the game entirely. After ending the call, I looked at my father. His face had aged ten years in ten minutes. That patent you said was worthless? I pulled up the approval documents on my tablet. It just revolutionized cancer treatment. While you were pushing me to take hospital board meetings, I was developing a therapy that could save millions of lives. But, your surgical career. Dad stammered. Was your dream not mine? I stood smoothing my simple blazer. I didn't need a prestigious hospital position or corporate connections. I needed time, lap space, and the freedom to prove everyone wrong. Rachel found her voice. $2.8 billion? Starting bid, I corrected her. By tomorrow, it'll probably be double that. Every pharmaceutical company in the world will want this patent. Emily, 
Mom whispered, why didn't you tell us? Would you have believed me? I gathered my things. You all made up your minds about my choices three years ago. Now excuse me, I have a revolution in cancer treatment to oversee. By evening the medical world was in upheaval. My tablet couldn't keep up with the notifications. Wilson Cancer Treatment Breakthrough Bidding reaches $5.4 billion. Revolutionary patent reshapes medical future. From surgeon to scientist, Dr. Emily Wilson's paradigm shift. I sat in my basement lab. Actually a cutting-edge research facility spanning 50,000 square feet beneath an unassuming office building. My team of 30 top researchers worked quietly at their stations, all of them believers who'd left prestigious positions to join my crazy project. Dr. Wilson? My assistant Sarah appeared. Your sister's here. Rachel stood in the doorway, looking out of place in her Chanel suit among the lab coats and equipment. Her eyes widened as she took in the facility. This is your basement lab? She walked in staring at the advanced machinery. This must have cost. My entire trust fund, I finished. Plus everything I made selling my summer house and investment portfolio. About 40 million total. 40 million? She sank into a chair. Why didn't you tell any of us? Because you would have tried to stop me. I pulled up the latest data on my holographic display. Just like Dad tried to stop me from leaving surgery. Like you tried to convince the hospital board not to support my research grant applications. She had the grace to look embarrassed. That was different. We were protecting you from yourself. No, I corrected her. You were protecting Dad's vision of success. While you were climbing the hospital corporate ladder I was here, developing a treatment that targets cancer cells with 97% accuracy. My phone buzzed. Martinez Pharmaceuticals had raised their bid to $6 billion. Three other major companies had entered the bidding war. Dad's in crisis mode, Rachel said quietly. He's called every contact he has in the medical community. They all told him the same thing. You've done the impossible. Not impossible. I pulled up my research data. Just different. The established protocols were wrong, Rachel. Someone had to prove it. By hiding in a basement for three years? By working without interference or pressure to conform? I gestured around the lab. Everyone here believed in the research enough to risk their careers. Unlike the hospital board which rejected my proposals thirteen times. About that. Rachel shifted uncomfortably. James wants to meet. Ah, uh, there was. James Chin, her fiancé, the hospital CEO's son. The one who'd personally rejected my last research proposal. Let me guess. The hospital suddenly wants to be involved in the clinical trials? They're offering you full control of the new oncology wing, Rachel leaned forward. James says you can name your terms. I laughed, the sound echoing off the lab walls. I don't need the hospital anymore, Rachel. Every major medical facility in the world is calling offering their resources for clinical trials. My tablet chimed again. Singapore Medical Institute offers $7.2 billion for exclusive rights. This is bigger than hospital politics now, I continued. This treatment could save millions of lives. I won't limit it to one facility's patients. Dad's reputation dash. Is not my concern, I cut her off. Neither is your fiancé's offer. I have work to do. As if on cue, Dr. Chin himself walked in followed by our father. Both men stopped short, taking in the scale of my basement lab. Emily, James started his corporate smile in place. We should discuss Dash. No, I interrupted, we shouldn't. Your hospital rejected my research. Repeatedly. Now you want to claim some connection to its success. Dad stepped forward. Princess, be reasonable. The hospital's resources Dash are irrelevant. I pulled up the latest bids on the main screen. 8 billion from Mayo Clinic. 9 billion from Johns Hopkins. 10 billion from a consortium of European hospitals. All offering unlimited resources for clinical trials. James's smile faltered. Those bids aren't public yet. No, but as the patent holder I see them all. I turned to my team. Dr. Kumar, please show them the latest trial results. My lead researcher projected a hologram of cancer cells being systematically eliminated by my treatment. The demonstration was beautiful in its simplicity and devastating to traditional protocols. This is impossible, Dad whispered. 
You've said that before, I reminded him. When I left surgery, when I sold everything to fund this lab, when I hired researchers who believed in the theory you called worthless. My phone buzzed again. The FDA had approved worldwide clinical trials. We could begin saving lives within months. What do you want? James asked finally. Want? I looked at my father, my sister and the man who'd tried to stop my research. I want what I've already achieved. The chance to change medicine for the better. Without compromise, without hospital politics, without having to prove myself to people who never believed anyway. Rachel stepped forward. Emily, please. The family name Dash. We'll be just fine, I assured her. Though probably not the way Dad planned. Instead of another Wilson surgeon, the world gets a Wilson breakthrough in cancer treatment. My tablet lit up with another alert. Global Medical Consortium offers $12 billion for shared rights. Now, I gestured to the door. I have work to do. Real work, Dad. The kind that saves lives without requiring me to follow anyone else's path. One week later, I stood at a podium in front of the World Health Organization Assembly in Geneva. Hundreds of the world's top medical professionals, hospital administrators, and pharmaceutical executives waited for my announcement. In the front row, Dad sat between Rachel and Mom, his expression unreadable. Next to them, James Chin kept checking his phone, probably watching his hospital's stock price fluctuate. Three years ago, I began, I walked away from surgery to pursue what many called an impossible theory. Today, I'm announcing that the Wilson Treatment Protocol has been licensed to a global consortium of non-profit hospitals and research facilities. For a total of one dollar. The room erupted. Dad's face went white. Rachel grabbed James's arm as he started to stand. The $14 billion offers were generous, I continued over the chaos, but this treatment wasn't developed for profit. It was developed to save lives, all lives not just those who can afford it. My tablet displayed the incoming headlines. Wilson rejects billions for cancer breakthrough. Revolutionary treatment to be freely available worldwide. Medical industry shocked by Wilson's non-profit decision. The Wilson Foundation, funded by private donors who share our vision, will oversee the implementation of this treatment in facilities worldwide. Any hospital, regardless of size or location, can apply for the protocol. The only requirement is that they make it available to all patients, regardless of their ability to pay. In the front row mom was crying. Dad stared straight ahead, his surgeon's hands gripping the armrests. Additionally, I smiled at James' chin, no single hospital group or pharmaceutical company will have exclusive rights. This breakthrough belongs to everyone. The WHO director took the podium next announcing the organization's full support and revealing that major donors had already pledged over $20 billion to the Wilson Foundation to support global implementation. In the green room afterward, Dad found me first. You turned down $14 billion, he said quietly. To save 14 million lives, I corrected him. Maybe more. The money was never the point, Dad. You taught me that medicine should be about helping people. I just chose to do it differently than you expected. Rachel burst in, James trailing behind her. Do you have any idea what you've done to our hospital's share price? I know exactly what I've done. I pulled up the latest data on my tablet. I've made life-saving treatment available to everyone, not just the wealthy patients your hospital courts. Emily, mom stepped forward, tears still in her eyes. I'm so proud of you. Dad's head snapped up. Catherine Dash. No, James. She cut him off. Our daughter just changed the world. Not by following your path but by creating her own. It's time you were proud of her too. My phone buzzed. The first shipments of treatment protocols were being prepared for hospitals in developing countries. Places that could never have afforded the treatment if I'd sold the patent. The Wilson Foundation, Dad said slowly, it's named after. My grandfather, I finished. Your father, the small-town doctor who treated everyone regardless of their ability to pay. The one whose practice you left to become a big city surgeon. He flinched. Grandfather Wilson's choice to remain in rural medicine had always been a point of contention. He believed medicine was about healing, not profit, I continued. When I was choosing between surgery and research I remembered his stories. About making house calls to families who could only pay in vegetables about seeing patients get better because he never turned them away. That was different, 
Rachel protested. Modern medicine requires dash. Requires what? I challenged. Massive profits? Exclusive access? Or doctors who remember their real purpose? My tablet chimed again. Hospitals worldwide were beginning to register for the treatment protocol. A map showed points of light spreading across every continent. Your sister's right, James started. The financial implications dash. Are exactly what I intended, I cut him off. This treatment will be my grandfather's legacy. Available to everyone everywhere. The Wilson Foundation will ensure that. Dad stepped closer looking at the map. All those lights. Are hospitals registering to receive the protocol, I explained. By this time next year, we expect to have implementation in over 10,000 facilities worldwide. 10,000? Rachel whispered. Lives saved matters more than profits made, I said softly. That's what grandfather taught me even if you all forgot. My phone buzzed one final time. The who was ready for the next announcement. I gathered my things straightening my lab coat. Now if you'll excuse me I have a global medical revolution to oversee. One that puts patients before profits, just like a small town doctor once taught his grandson who taught his granddaughter. As I reached the door dad called out. Emily. I turned. Your grandfather. He swallowed hard. He would be proud. I know, I smiled. He believed in me when I first shared my theory. Asked me one question, will it help people? And now? Mom asked. Now it will help everyone. I checked my tablet one last time. The map of lights had doubled in just minutes. That's what real medicine is about. Something you all seem to forget but I never did. The revolution wasn't just in the treatment. It was in remembering what medicine was meant to be. A way to heal everyone not just those who could afford it. Grandfather Wilson would indeed be proud.